Hey Google, bring me a beer. Get your own beer, you lazy a Well, that's something we're gonna have to fix. Self-care is super important, but sometimes it's hard to find time to do the things that you really need to do to support yourself. So today, we're gonna have a robot do that for us. Hey, I'm Dave from the Armory, and today, we're gonna make a beer Sherpa that always makes sure you're hydrated. The platform we're working with in this project is a Dingo O from ClearPath Robotics. So this is a mobile robot that can drive and turn like a regular robot, but it also has these special wheels, which means that it can strafe sideways if it ever needs to. And that gives you a whole bunch more movement options for tight areas. It also has a Gen 3 light arm from Canova already mounted on it. So this is the a six axis arm with a gripper on it, but no camera. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. All of this already came integrated from ClearPath and that's kind of what they do best is do a full on integration. So this came with the arm already set up with the power supply, it's already running ROS. So all of this just comes out of the box like this, which means that I can jump into projects faster, which is great. There are a few things that I'm gonna need to add to this that I didn't bother telling ClearPath about so they couldn't integrate it, but we'll go through adding all of that to make sure that it works for exactly what we need. The first problem we need to sort out is how this robot is gonna navigate around the house on its own. The MCU and the computer inside of the robot do a decent job of knowing how far the robot has moved, but if it slips at all, it's lost. Also, it has no way of seeing the world around it. So you could pick it up and move it somewhere and it wouldn't really realize that it's not where it was. So there's two pieces of hardware that we're gonna to add to this to make that whole navigation thing work a lot better. So the first piece of hardware we're gonna add is this IMU. Now this is an inertial measurement unit, or IMU from MicroString. Now it'll have an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer in it. So using all of that, there's smarts inside it that will always be measuring where it is and where it thinks it's moved. All the information from this, including all the information from the robot itself, the robot can get a pretty good estimate of where it's actually moved, even if it's been picked up or it's slipped on some dirt. The second piece of hardware that we're gonna be adding is a 2D LiDAR. Now this is a UST-10 from Hokuyo. And what it does is it will shoot out a laser that will bounce off a wall or an object and it will measure how far away that object is. It does that in a whole ring around itself over and over and over again. It's very similar to the safety LiDAR that I was using on Susan, except it has none of that safety stuff in it. It's just a bare bones 2D LiDAR. So it can see everything around the robot at about this height. That does bring up some problems where anything above or below that plane, the robot won't be able to see, but there are some other ways that we'll try to take care of that and we'll do that after. To find its way around the house, first it has to make a map using SLAM. SLAM is simultaneous localization and mapping. That means that the robot is trying to add laser scans to the map, but also figure out where it is in the map at the same time. It does this over and over again and is constantly improving the map. The robot can find its way around the house already using the IMU and the LiDAR with the computer running ROS inside. But there's one more modification we need to make to this before it's all ready. 
we need to add our Z2 from Stereo Labs. Now this is the stereo camera that we had used in the shop defense video. Check that out if you haven't seen it. What this will do is it will give it an extra set of eyes when it's navigating around. The LiDAR can only see in a 2D plane around the robot. It's really quick, it's fairly accurate, but anything above or below that plane, the robot can't see it at all. It has no idea it's there. The arm, much higher than that plane. So what, we, what we're gonna do is mount the Z2 onto the arm so that you can get a point cloud of everything around the robot, higher and lower than the robot, and it can take that data and avoid things like overhangs or low obstacles that are below the LiDAR. Now, since we're using a stereo camera, we're gonna need proper processing to actually be able to handle all of that data. And for that, we're gonna use our trusty dusty Rudy NX from Connectech. So it's a Jetson NX in a ruggedized case with a bunch of awesome connectivity on it. We've used this in some other projects. So what we're gonna do is mount this inside of the robot. The robot has a couple little cubbies inside that's actually really easy to mount the hardware away so that it's not just stuck on top. I'm using some 2020 extrusion and some little 3D printed legs that I made to make a little ramp holder for the beer. That makes it so that the beers will always roll forward and the arm can just keep picking up from the same spot. I could use AI to actually find beer cans, but that's a lot more work and a lot less consistent. When the robot is navigating, it does a pretty good job, but will never be perfect. To fix that, we're gonna use Aruco markers. They're kind of like QR codes, but a camera can figure out where they are in front of it. So as long as the robot gets pretty close to where it needs to be, the cameras can actually localize where the beer is and where the fridge is without needing super accurate navigation. This smaller Gen 3 light arm from Canova uses the exact same driver as the Gen 3 arm that I had used in the weed killer video. It's a six axis collaborative arm, so I don't really have to worry about safety and it has a gripper built into it, so it's perfect for this project. To control the arm, I'm just using Move It in Ross like usual. It'll do collision avoidance, path planning, inverse kinematics, all of it for free inside of Ross. I'm using a service called IFTTT, which stands for If This Then That, which is actually really easy and free to set up and use. There are a ton of services that you can connect together. I'm using Google Assistant so that I can use my Google Home. I set it up so that it's looking for a specific phrase and it will pull the location out of that phrase. It'll then send that to a Ross web server that I'm running at my house. Of course, there's no security in this, but that's future Dave's problem. Hey Google, bring a beer to the couch. Beerbot is on its way to the couch. In that map that we had made earlier, there are known locations within the house. There's the office, there's the couch, there's the fridge. Ross will receive a request for the location, then just command the robot to go pick up a beer and head there. We got all the little pieces set up. Now it's time to just take it easy. Hey Google, bring a beer to the office. Beerbot is on its way to the office.
Hey Google, bring a beer to the couch. BeerBot is on its way to the couch. Because it knows where it is in the house and it can see the world around it, even if the robot is blocked, it will just figure out a different way to get where it needs to go, replan, and head on in that direction. Hey Google. Bring a beer to the throne. Beerbot is on its way to the throne. In typical engineering fashion, we did a project for over a week to fix a problem that could have been handled in about a minute. But now that will never be an issue again. We will always have beer whenever we need it. These projects take a while, so if you want to support the channel, hit subscribe and also check us out on Patreon to see what we have going on over there. The code for this will also be up on GitHub and that link will be down in the description. Thanks for watching. Robots are awesome. See you next time.